The DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Paul Henry on the Cavalcade of America. And here's our star. Good evening. It pleases me very much to come to you tonight in a true story called Lay That Musket Down in the role of that very interesting man, Christopher Ludwig. He played a remarkable part in the American Revolution. If it weren't for this man, Ludwig, who can tell? Maybe George Washington would have lost the war. Yes, who can tell? Back in the darkest days of the Revolution, when American hopes were very low, a man comes to General Washington with a strange proposal. I'm Christopher Ludwig, General. A baker from Philadelphia. Yes, Mr. Ludwig. I'd rather expected a visit from you. I've been told of your proposals to Congress, that you have certain ideas. Uh, only one idea, sir. It is my plan to win the war. You're a German, aren't you? Uh, I'm an American. But uh, I was born at uh, Gießen in Hesse. You are a Hessian? Uh, yes, sir. And there are Hessians on Staten Island. Yes. Yes, there certainly are. Uh, but uh, they will desert. And then there, there will be no army there. Desert? What are you talking about? They do not fight you because they want to or because they hate you. It is because they have been sold like so many cattle. I appreciate that. Here they may die on a soil that is, is not their own. Here they think of their homes in, in Hesse to which they may never return. General, they have loved ones back there. Wives. Children. I grant that, Mr. Lubig, but uh, what has all this got to do with your plan? I will go among them. I will tell them about me, Christopher Ludwig, who came here 23 years ago. I had nothing, just nothing. Now I own my own bake shop in Philadelphia. But more than that, I'm a part of this country, like every American. No Hessian on Staten Island can say that. Even his life is not his own. Wait a moment. Uh, how will you tell them all this? How will you get to them? How? I will walk to them. Right through their lines, just like that. Oh, no, no. I have a plan, General. I will dress in the uniform of the American army. I will say I'm a deserter, come to join my people. It's a good idea, isn't it? It's uh, no good. You know you would be hanged if they caught you? Yes, this I know. Mr. Ludwig, why do you want to do this? Why? Yes, why? I will tell you. I love this country. Here a man can own his own bake shop and he can raise his children. Here he is not afraid that some night there will come a knock on his door, a knock that means he will lose his children to an army or perhaps his life to a prince. A man can love such a country as this. Mr. Ludwig, I will tell you something. We're desperate. I've listened to you because i listen to anyone with a plan, no matter how wild or fantastic it may seem. We are losing this war. Right now, we are hiding until we can gain strength. If the Hessian commanders knew it, they could destroy us. Oh, General, let me try. I beg you, let me try. Mr. Ludwig, you will have a uniform and a safe conduct through our line. You let me do it? If you succeed in causing desertion among the Hessians, we'll have gained time and hope. Thank you, sir. God speed you. Keep your arms in the air. I'm coming up. Who are you? Sergeant, my name is Christopher Ludwig. I come from New Jersey. What do you do here? I've run away from the American army. Is that a... No, I... I just do not wish to fight my own people. Your own people? Keep your arms in the air. You said your own people. What do you mean? You are in American uniform. Uh, I'm a Hessian. I'm from Gießen in, in Hesse. So? Spent there. Miller. Yeah? You come from Gießen? Yeah. You know this man? No. I have never seen him. Oh, you are too young to know me. Sergeant, maybe if I ask him a question. Do it. You. 
What is the name of the pastor of the little church on Kölnstraße? Well, well, well. When I was there, it was... It was Brenner. Yes, Emil Brenner. Brenner? <laughs> but that was more than 20 years ago. Yes, 23 years ago. That is how long I'm over here. Does he speak the truth, my lord? There was a pastor named Brenner. He married my mother and father. No more talk. We will take him to the officers. <laughs> Your name? Christopher Ludwig. You are a deserter from the Americans? Yes, I am. Uh, only three days. Why? Why did you desert? Herr Oberst, I do not wish to fight my own people. Your own people? You're a spy. No, no, no. B believe me, I I'm no spy. Look, I wear the American uniform. That proves nothing. Anyone can pick up a bundle of rags like that. Where did you get it? Oh, well, they gave it to me, Herr Oberst. When? Uh, two months ago. Oh. They forced you into service, is that it? No. I enlisted, Herr Oberst. You enlisted? And two months later, you desert? What kind of a soldier is that? Well, I... I didn't know then I would have to fight Hessians. My own people. Where did you say you came from? Uh, Gießen. No, I mean three days ago. New Jersey. Oh. From the American army there? I asked you a question, Ludwig. Uh, yeah, from the American army there. Mm -hmm. Good. And you know where they are and how many. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, yes. Come over here, Ludwig. Uh, yes, Sir Robert. You know what this is? A map. A map. And this, where I point? Uh, New uh, uh, Jersey. Correct. Now show me where you came from. Well, show me. Uh, forgive me, but... Uh... I, I must look a little closer. And I will help you. The American forces are here, yes? They, uh... No, no, no. I, I do not think that is where I came from. No? Perhaps from here? No. God damn, Lord, but you came from somewhere. And I think it was here. Answer. No, no. No, it, it was not there. <laughs> well, you saved your neck three times, Ludwig, because we know the Americans are not in those places. But surely they are somewhere. Point out the place from which you came, Ludwig. Point it out. It... It was here, Herr Obers. Mm -hmm. Yes, that could be. Most unlikely place, yet one that General Washington would pick if he wished to find. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you are telling the truth, Ludwig. I am telling the truth, Herr Oberst. Very well, thank you. I may go now? Yes. To the prison. The prison? I'm but... not a fool, Christopher Ludwig. I shall make sure that you are not one, because only a fool would lie and put his neck in a noose. If you tell the truth, good. If you lie, you will do a little dance on air. Our story, Lay That Musket Down, starring Paul Henreid, will continue in just a moment. As a deserter from the American army, Christopher Ludwig makes his way to the Hessian post on Staten Island. There he's questioned, and in order to accomplish his mission, is forced to disclose the position of Washington's army. It's now two days later, and Ludwig's again in the quarters of the Hessian commander. Uh, Ludwig, you told the truth. We have found out the Americans are where you say. It was very clever of General Washington to choose that place. Yes. <laughs> but we are clever, too. We will give them a great surprise. Surprise? Yes. They think we still hunt them. They think they're safe. But thanks to you, Herr Ludwig, they are not. You are going to attack? But yes. Uh, when? <laughs> that is the surprise. Mm -hmm. But now I wish to show my gratitude. I have arranged quarters for you. Uh, your pardon, Herr Oberst. Uh, May I ask a favor? But certainly, name it. 
It is a very long time since I have seen anyone from Hesse. If it is agreeable to you, I should like very much to live with the men, the common soldiers. But I have arranged what? A man's ears become hungry for his own language. A man's heart becomes lonely for, for talk of his native land. You can understand that. No? Yes, yes, of course. Very well, Ludwig, I shall be arranged. But what on earth will you do there? You seem an intelligent man. What will you do for amusement? Oh, I shall talk, sir. Just talk. Max is always singing that song. I wish he would stop. Why? I like the song, Carl. I like it very much. It makes me homesick and lonely. Oh? How long have you been away from Hesse, Carl? A year. A year. It is 23 years for me. Yeah, but your family is here. I have not seen my wife and children in five years. First they sent me to Turkey, then to Prussia. Now here. And you don't like America? No. Nothing but swamps and trees. Oh, then you have never been to Pennsylvania. Huh? Pennsylvania? Huh? Where's that? South and west from here. Ah, there is a place, Carl. There is a place. Is it so wonderful as all that? Wonderful? Would you like to hear about it? Yeah, I suppose so. All right. It is a big land. Big and rich. Why, the, the, the earth is so fertile that a man may, may reach down and pick up a handful of it, and in five minutes there is something growing from it. Oh, that is a story. Oh, it I... is true. You were a farmer, weren't you, Carl? Yes. And how long has it been since you felt soil in your hands and, and smelled the richness of it, felt the cool, moist dew, and, and watched the fields turn green in the spring? Too long. But uh, tell us about Pennsylvania. Is it far? Oh, no, not far. Ah, not even if a, if a man travels on foot. Ah. But I talk too much. I make you lonely for Hesse, for your wife and children. A soldier should not think of these things. A soldier should think only of his duty to his prince. To his prince? Huh. One who sold us like cattle. Carl, be careful. Uh, Max is right. I'm a fool for talking, sir. Oh, no, no, no. Tell us more. Uh, this... Pennsylvania. Must one obey and swear allegiance to a prince to own land there? One swears allegiance to one thing only in this country, Carl. Yes. Liberty. Liberty. Yes, Max. Here is a place to live and grow and breathe air that is free. Oh, what is this? Well, what are you doing? We, we were talking, Sergeant. Just talking. Christopher. What? Are you my friend? Of course I am. You know that. This Pennsylvania, a man could reach it and live there. Of course. But the war will be long. Before the war is over. What do you mean? Christopher, there are many of us who are sick of this. Men who would go, who would leave. Is this? Yeah, what else is there? If we stay and fight, we will be killed for a war that is not ours. Or if we are not killed, it means only service somewhere else. But if a man went to this Pennsylvania... How? A moment ago, you asked if I was your friend. Now I ask you the same thing. Are you mine? Yes, of course. Good. Then I'm going to tell you something. What? I came here as a spy. A spy? Shh. Don't shout it. Now, what will you do, Carl? You... You will be hanged. Not if my secret is kept. Will it be, Carl? I... I, I wish you had not told me. I had to. Because I need you, Carl. I want you to speak to the men you can trust. I can't do it all alone. Me? Speak to them? Yes. Tell them of this land where men love freedom enough to fight and die for it. Tell Max that his wife and children will live on their own land, in their own house, unafraid. Tell Emil that here the cows give 
ten quarts of milk twice a day. The two cabbages fill a bushel basket. Will you tell them, Carl? But what about me? You will go too. I will take you with me. When? Right away? Not right away, Carl. But as soon as enough men have deserted to make this army useless against my country. And if we are discovered? You said yourself that only more service or death waits for you. Well, this way you have a chance, Carl. Take it. Three hundred deserters in five days, Sergeant. Three hundred. Herr Oberst, we do what we can. It is not enough. At this rate, we shall have no army. Uh, your pardon, Herr Oberst, but I think I know the reason huh? it is uh, Christopher Ludwig. What, Chris? What are you talking about, you idiot? He talks, Herr Oberst, night after night, day after day, and the men listen to him. He talks. Ah, so do we all. What has that got to do with these deserters? I do not know, Herr Oberst, but I believe he has done something. How? Ever since he came, the men grumble and complain. That is a common ailment with soldiers. It is his fault, Herr Oberst. His fault, his fault. Couldn't be you, uh, Sergeant. Perhaps laxity in placing guards. Or a dozen other reasons. You talk like a fool. What can one man do to make 300 desert? Will Herr Oberst talk to him? I will talk to all the men. Come with me to the barracks. Attention! The Oberst wishes to speak. In a moment. Christopher Ludwig, come here. You wish to see me, Herr Oberst? Yes. What is all this talk about? Talk. Talk, Herr Oberst? The sergeant tells me you talk a great deal. Oh, well, uh... I've always talked too much, Herr Oberst, ever since I was a little boy. <laughs> it's a failing with me. But uh, why do you ask about it, Herr Oberst? There have been many desertions, Ludwig. Uh, yes, I, I, I know that, Herr Oberst. I'm sure you do. The sergeant seems to think they have something to do with you. With me? Uh, but how? Uh, in, in what way? What do you talk about? Why, almost anything. Almost anything that, that enters my head. Uh, but surely, uh, the Herr Oberst doesn't think I persuade the men to desert. Why, I, I, I could be hanged. Besides, uh, I, I'm still here, and, and as you once said, uh, I'm not a fool. Hmm. I guess not. Very well. Now, all of you will listen to me. No man will be allowed to leave quarters. Any man who tries to do so will be shot without a question being asked. I repeat... No man leaves this quarters until we march out tomorrow. That is all. Come with me, sir. I never heard of such a Christopher, you heard that? Yes, yes. We march out tomorrow. Yes, come. That means an attack. An attack on General Washington's army. I gave the position. They must get out. Yeah, but how? Fight our way out. They will kill us. We'll go tonight, Carl. But the sentry, the guard. We have muskets here, Carl. It is our only chance. Tonight, at midnight. Christopher? Yes, Carl? We are all ready. How many? Fifty. Good. Now listen to me. Come here, all of you. We shall leave one by one. Stay close to the buildings. Be as quiet as you can. And then, when we're all together, we'll rush past the guards. Once we reach the river, we'll be safe. If we reach, we will. Shh. Who is that? The sergeant. Quick, close your eyes. Pretend you sleep. So, all my pretties are asleep, huh? Well, that is good. I like to see all of you comfortable. Are you sleeping, Lupix? Not yet, Sergeant. Perhaps it is too noisy, eh? Well, I will tell you something. When I leave, I'm going to post a double guard at all doors and windows. Just to make sure. Of course, I do not mistrust you, Ludwig. But just to make certain. Yes, Sergeant, just to make certain. 
Christopher. You heard him. Yeah. Once the double guard was posted, we have no chance at all. Now the muskets, get them. Oh, Christopher, we have no chance. They will shoot us down like dogs. It is a sure thing that Sergeant gave orders before he came in. All right, then listen to me, all of you. Come here. You can die in here, or you can try to make a fight for it. And you'll be fighting for something you never had before. Liberty. You were sold to be killed. Now fight to live in freedom. You've gone into battle against men who were willing to die for their liberty. Why do you fight them? Make your own liberty, here and now. Make this your cause and your country. Now, who is with me? Or do I go alone? I am with you, Christopher. Good, Carl. And who else? I go. Me. 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 I go too. <laughs> Far so good. The river is straight ahead. Yes, just beyond the powder magazine. The power. Car. Oh, the powder magazine. What of it? What if it blows up? There'll be no powder. No attack. Oh, you can't. There are sentries. We'll take care of the sentries. Then we'll, we'll break open the powder keg or two and, and leave a trail of powder, light it, and, and then. Puff. Good. Come on. <laughs> Look. The sentries are talking together. Yeah. Down there. Here is our chance to get in. Quick. In here. See those cakes of powder? Yes, Christopher. Carl, pray open that powder cake quickly. Yeah. <clears throat> there. No. One more. For a powder trail. Yeah. Now, now, trail the powder behind us. Yeah. Come, Carl, come. Uh, there is Wait. They see us. A few more steps to the woods. Yeah, we will stop here, quickly. Flint and steel. Here. Yeah. But they can see the spark. A few more. Christopher. Yes? How much farther is it to Pennsylvania? Let us stop here a moment. We are there? Look down into that valley, Carl. Look. Yeah. Have you ever, ever seen such a land? Why, the, the cows give five quarts of milk. Ah, 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 ah. You said ten. <laughs> I did? <laughs> well, perhaps I did exaggerate a bit. <laughs> And you said the earth is so rich that a man can watch his crops grow overnight. And that two cabbages fill a bushel basket. And that seeds sprout before the next row is planted. You said all that, Christopher. I know. <laughs> and most of it is true. But the greatest thing about this land is something I did not tell you. Well, you said a great deal. Could there be more? Oh, much more. Look over this land, Carl. Look at it. Yeah. It is beautiful. Yeah. There's something in the land here that, that one cannot raise in the old countries across the sea. Not yet. There is something raised here that will spread its roots across the ocean. But here it grows first. Liberty. What is a man without that, Carl? Nothing. A shell, a husk. Liberty. Fill your nostrils with the smell of it. And then pray. Pray that it always grows and always flourishes. Come, Carl. We have a long journey ahead. Palmer had a beautiful crop of chin whiskers, and he defied everyone in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, to make him shave it off. 
We'll hear his story next week. Hear how he fought in and out of jail for his right to wear a beard. Listen next week when Brian Donlevy stars in Joe Palmer's Beard on the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's play, Lay That Musket Down, was written by Russell Hughes. Appearing with Paul Henreid were Robert Dryden as Carl and Peter Capel as Herr Obert. The music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Boring. This is Ted Pearson speaking. to join us next week for Joe Palmer's Beard, starring Brian Donlevy. Cavalcade of America, directed by John Zoller, came to you this evening from the Vanderbilt Theater in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry.